On January 7th, 2015, TV3's groundbreaking drama Red Rock was born. Tonight, we celebrate the show's first incredible year on screen. Across the next hour, we'll look back at the massive stories that have dominated Red Rock. Don't you touch him! Stay away from him! We'll begin the countdown to the biggest episode of the year, where we say farewell to one of our most beloved characters. And stay with us as we take an exclusive look at what's coming up in 2016. Welcome to Red Rock, the story so far. Step out of the vehicles. Major! Adrian! It's been a hell of a year for the residents of Red Rock. There have been brutal beatings, bribery, and bullying. We all know exactly what you are. <laughs> a crazy bitch. No! 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 Who is it? Who's talking to you? <laughs> temper, temper, Mr. McKay. You're losing it. Don't push me! This is your chance to catch up on what's happened to all your favourite characters. They've had 12 months of drama and high emotion. I'm pregnant. <laughs> and if you think it can't get any worse for them, you ain't seen nothing yet. As the show builds towards an explosive and tragic New Year's climax, it's no wonder that Red Rock has proved a huge hit with its viewers. I love Red Rock because I think it's... it's Brilliant acting and really strong storylines. It's that lovely combination of kind of dry Irish humour with gritty stuff going on. The main reason to love Red Rock is uh, the tension, the spitefulness of Bridget and the innocent countryness of Podge. I would like to tell you how I pulled it all off, but I'm sure you'd rather wait and read all about it in the Garda Review. Wait, get back here now! One of the real reasons that I got hooked on it is that it has this look of a big glossy TV drama. There's a lot of sweeping shots, they get a bit of breathing room. There is zero smell the fart acting. Once the, um, the promo came out uh, on TV3, I thought that was amazing. It was really stylish and, and looked great and felt different than anything else we had. Well, I guess it, it sort of it came from um, Peter McKenna's notion of sort of making a modern day Western. I mean, that's kind of, that was the genesis of it, of a, of a good sheriff in a town uh, where there are kind of different warring factions. All this fighting and feuding, it stops now. I started with an idea I'd always liked about uh, a man married into one family and caught between two feuding families. So that was one starting point. And I also drew on personal experiences from my own life. I based it in a town similar enough in feel to the town I grew up in, Hoth in County Dublin, and I used characters and people I knew and instances I knew, and I put them all together and kind of stirred the pot, and we came up with Red Rock. Red Rock is a show about modern Ireland in all its extraordinary diversity, you know, at a time of extraordinary change for the country. What Red Rock is, it is a police drama, but it's about a community and it centres on a feud between two families that's been going on for years and it's it's sort of seen through the eyes of the local police. Get off! Get off! Calm down. Let me go, all right? Oh, I, I will, all right. Get down. down! Get down, you hear? When we sat down to make Red Rock, we watched a few soaps that exist, and then we said, what if soap didn't exist? Uh, what if we were inventing it now? What would it look like? 
we were able to take in all the new technology, all the new methods and new ways of telling stories. And I think it makes the soap feel more real. I'm warning you. What we were determined, and I'm not, not just me, but everybody who worked in the show, came with a lot of ambition and wanted to do something slightly different that would make a mark. So although there was lots of obstacles and restrictions, I think on many occasions the show has really overcome them and done something quite different. And that's a testament to everyone's work. Torn between two warring families, our unfortunate Gardaí are caught in the crossfire and struggle to keep the peace. So, let's meet Red Rock's finest. Right, nobody move! I play Superintendent James McKay. He is the top cop in the station, the boss. In the show, I play Angela Tyrrell, and Angela is the sergeant of the station. Cover your mouth! <laughs> Leave it! We have to go! No! I play uh, Sergeant Brian McGonagall and um, Brian would be the renegade maverick cop of the station that likes to take things into his own hands and do it the way he wants to do it. Shut the door. I play Sharon Clear. Sharon is very ambitious but she's very kind-hearted. She's one of the lads and she's a new recruit to Red Rock. Doesn't take two pairs of eyes to look at a bit of security footage. I'd say the criminals can't sleep at night with you on the beat. You might be lucky. You might catch someone doing a drive off. You wouldn't get us a cup of tea in a wagon wheel. Nice and milky, two sugar. I play Podge Brennan in Red Rock. And Podge would be a rank and file Garda. I play Rory Walsh, Detective Walsh. Um, he's kind of new in the station. Um, brought in to try to find the mole. And uh, yeah, the girls are kind of enjoying having him around, the guys not so much. I play Nikki Grogan, so she's the in detective inspector. I play the Croatian guard in the show, uh, Garda Adrian Kosos. I play Garda Sean Holden, AKA Westlife, the brave, loyal, heroic Garda of the Red Rock Station. Stay with me, Ali boy, stay with me. No, 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 no! Well, to me, it's a very refreshing bit of Irish television drama because up to now, or in my opinion, most, if not all, Gardaí that had been depicted on television, especially in dramatic scenes, were coming across as kind of the arrogant, uh, unfriendly individuals. Whereas in Red Rock, it's great because we have so many different characters, and I think that shows it more authentically than, than what had been out before. Wait for it. Wait. Geraldine Liner, TV3 News. Yes! Yes, Dorian! Dorian! Boom, shaka, Tasty. <laughs> to anyone who's like the average Joe on the street, you just look upon the guards as being the law, and that's it. And you do forget that there are people behind the uniforms, and, and they, um, they have a tough job to do. She's messing with your head. Meaning? When you lie down with dogs. You don't know what you're on. I would have a favourite character in Red Rock. I would have to be Podge. He is actually a good guy. He's a good guard, but he like you know he's a bit work shy, and he likes to kind of you know um, stay in the canteen more than get out and do the work. But I love that about him. Do I think I'd make a good guard? Absolutely not. I cry at the drop of a hat. <laughs> the guards particularly, we spend so much time together. We're really here a lot. We're shooting all the time. So you really develop, you know, real friendships and a real family atmosphere. Have you ever wondered what a day in the life is like for an actor on a soap? Well, wonder no more, as David Crowley, who plays Garda Sean Holden, invites us to spend the day with him. A normal day for an actor at Red Rock would probably be um, an early start. So you probably get up about 6 a.m. You want to be here first set 
At about half seven, the first thing I do is get breakfast. You need a, you need a good breakfast because these can be very long days. This is Michelle. Say hi, Michelle. Hello. She looks after me every morning. Then you go down and you get your makeup done, which would probably be about 15, 20 minutes. Sadly, we are barred from broadcasting any audio due to the sacred makeup room code of conduct. What's said in the makeup room stays in the makeup room. Lovely. After doing makeup, we'll head in and get our costume on. Cool. Let's get this show on the road. And then we'll come in here, relax, warm up, get the lines into your head for about 10 or 15 minutes, and then you'll head to set and start shooting. So the scene we're just about to film is a scene where Sean comes back for the first time after getting a few hits from a few lads in the Ridge Estate. And this is when the guards welcome him back. Once on the set, David is fitted with a radio microphone. And then, it's showtime. Thank you. I'm Jane, you're in here as well. Yeah. Just around marks there, guys. Thanks. Good for positions there. Thank, Thank you. Thank you. 141, take one A and B mark. Just tackle on the floor. Tackle, tackle. An episode of Red Rock is filmed every two days. And despite the quick turnaround, there's always a friendly atmosphere on set. He's back. Ah. He shouldn't do. In Video Village, the director ensures he's happy with what's on screen. And cut, let's go one more. And here is the finished scene. He shouldn't have. Like, really, he shouldn't have. I didn't. Crack your face, Westlife, a comparing carbs. You see, that's more like it. Nice one, Shazza. Hey, where's Podge? He's probably giving a dummy mouth to mouth right about now. Oh, I don't know if about his love life. Now you've met the Gardaí, keep watching. In part two, we meet the feuding families, the Kylies and the Hennessys. High and mighty Patricia Hennessy's son is a murderer. Let's meet the Kylies, one of our two warring families. They'll steal your heart and your car stereo. Go on, it's traditional. Here we go, yes, go, yes, go, yes, go, go on, go on, yes, go on, yes, go on. Look what you brought, I did. There's only one thing the Kylies love more than double denim and high heels. And that's getting one over on the Hennessy's. They're two different sides of a coin, you know. Patricia has wealth, she's polished, whereas the Kylies are not. They're from poverty. At the time when the show was created, it was like during the recession. They re represented a family who were a family of survivors. Yeah. I think they're quite like a lot of families in that they're dysfunctional a lot of the time. They can be really hard on each other, but at the end of the day, when, you know, when it actually comes down to things that are important, they're all 100% there for each other. We'd all muck in. Help you out. He said no. You could move back home. Bring the baby up here. What, were you, Dan, Dino the Ferry? You know what I mean. We'd all love it. I'm definitely Team Kylie. Yes, I love Bridget. Bridget is conniving. And she is really the boss. What? What's happened now? Katie's pregnant. Katie is pretty feisty. Um, she's kind of the good moral one among her family um, who tend to be a bit wayward at times. 
high and mighty Patricia Hennessy's son is a murderer. Every time he's in trouble, it's always a woman that's got him in trouble. He's, you know what I mean? He's, he's, he's caught in the middle of Cady and Bridget. Victimisation of an honest man, that's what. Dad. It's all right, love. I'll see you later. I'll fill your boots. He can be sarcastic and he can be funny, but he can also be quite grim and, and quite gruesome and, and, you know, quite harsh. You know, I don't know what he's capable of, you know? Get off! Get off! Keith! Get off! Stop! Keith! The best cast family. Now, I'm not just saying it because I am in the family. We just hit it off. There's something that happened um, when we first came together. We just bonded. Offset, the Kylies are... Very like a real family, actually. It's this great bond among the family. Like, um, like we'd be out in the pub, you know, and Paul would like lend me 20 quid, you know, which is which is very kind of like a da thing to do. This for you, Vinny. Put towards Darren's funeral expenses. Thanks. But he was my son too. My dream storyline would be I'm not going to be able to use this. A threesome with Patricia and Bridget. No. Oh. 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 oh, you're on your good thing. <laughs> Corking out in a way that Vincent and Bridget end up owning the pier pub. Could you imagine them behind the bar of that place? If they had a pub, that just gives them the option to go straight, but you know, there'd be a bit of under the counter dealings and I can just imagine the clientele would possibly change. And I think, you know, the peer pub could be a, either a fun place to go into or maybe turn into a bit of a hole, I don't know. For all the hardness at times, the illegality, the kind of the comedy, there's a real beating emotional heart in that family. Whilst the Gardaí and the Kylies are bitter enemies on screen, the actors playing Nicky and Bridget are best mates off screen. So I'm giving a set tour to my best mate in real life, Denise. Okay, so this is the staff room and now we're coming into the front office. And then there's the hatch. I've been, been there like a few you. times. Yes, you have. And then this is Sean's desk. And then... We go around to the front desk. Hey, yeah. Do you want to book so, me in? Yeah, I do want okay. to book you in. Okay. <clears throat> yeah. Okay. Uh, you don't need to press the bell again. <laughs> How can oh. I help you? I'd like to report a crime. No problem. <laughs> so now we're going down to the cell. Uh, that is my office. And then we turn into the cell. Oh, God, her. it looks so Where you might visit. Yeah, it is. You're going to be in here for the night, Bridget, all right? Oh. Yeah. <laughs> Don't forget about dinner. <laughs> That'd be awful. <laughs> so now we're going to head over to where you hang out, the Kylie household. Yay. So, come on into our sitting room. I'm invited Said in this Said the time. spider to the fly. <laughs> <laughs> so this is the Kylie sitting room. It's um, cosy. Look at the top hat and the white Is seat. that a joke? No, that's Huge. his actual Debs. You are having Stephen a laugh. Will murder me. Stephen is not going to speak into this again. <laughs> he looks That's... like he's going to break into a Fred Astaire dance. <laughs> Will I bring you into, into the, the kitchen. kitchen? You can make me a cup of tea. Come on. So, Valerie, oh. this is the Kylie kitchen. This is where all the magic happens. <laughs> the teddy bear. Like oh it? my God, look at all the dishes I'd hate to be in. I know. Let's go to the pub. Yeah. So this is the new pier pub. Welcome. So we were all sitting here and Adam, God love him, was coming with a massive tray of drinks and just was better to give them out and then the whole thing went all, all over all of us. Action! Now, these are on the house. Oh, oh thanks, thank you. That's very kind. Oh, 
We didn't start this. Thank you so much, Denise. I love you. I love you. Oh, this is good. This is good. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks so much for coming around, and I hope you keep watching the show. Whilst the lowly Kylies find themselves on the wrong side of the law, the Hennessys seem to think that they're well above it. The Hennessys are one of the two feuding families in Red Rock. They are the wealthy kingpins of Red Rock. Um, they are a prosperous family who feel they can ride roughshod over other people, particularly the Kylies. I love the Hennessys because they're ruthless. Like, they've got it all. They're, they're in the position that everyone wants to be in. They've got money, they've got power, they've got privilege. Is this the brick they used? No, that's the other one, the one we keep in the floor. You don't have to be a genius to work out that the Kylies did this. I can give you the address if it helps. If I had to pick a family, I mean, if you were going to make me choose, I'd have to say I'd probably be with the snooty Hennessys. Yeah. Can I be the snooty one? I want to be the snooty one for sure. Oh God, she terrifies me. It's, she's wonderful. She would kill for her children. Um, she's a lioness. I think you should all leave right now. Not before we see our poxy son. Even if I have to tear this place apart, I will. He's not here. Uh, don't uh, you uh, touch him! Stay away from him! Claire is a solicitor and she's always kept busy. She's representing her brother, um, so she's got a lot on her plate. Yes, Mum. I can't. I'm in the car on the way to work. Well, why didn't you just say so? So better be quick. I'm due in court in 40 minutes. You've seen through the last year um, a man under a tremendous amount of pressure on a journey towards um, finally accepting uh, what he has done. Your brother knew about you and Dave. Did you know that? He was blackmailing him over. That's why David stole the money from the pub. But to your scumbag brother got too greedy. So my scumbag brother did like always. He got me to sort it out. To start, I found that he was a kind of a boy and just getting up to nonsense. We didn't really have much responsibilities. But now he's a father, he's a man. So it's, it's, it's been amazing growing up with him. You're making a big deal out of this and it doesn't have to be. So all this is my fault then? I'm not saying that. Just didn't want to fight you. Yeah, Bill for that. We all hate each other. We all, I'm joking. We all absolutely adore each other and it, it's, it's, it feels like a cop-out answer, but it's so true. I was very maternal. I was very protective of my, the, the, the wonderful actors playing my children. Myself and Kathy seem to have filmed a lot of scenes where she holds my face and like stares into my eyes for ages. Um, so it's hard to not form an intense kind of bond when you've spent a long time just in contact, staring into each other's eyes. I remember immediately going, wow, are they beautiful children? <laughs> I'm a massive, massive fan of Kathy Belton. You have somebody of that caliber on this soap opera. Um, so anything she does, I'm going to adore. Kathy is someone we can learn from as young actors. She is kind of the pro that we can watch and learn from, and she's, she's very generous when she's working, very kind and helpful. When we go down to the station to make your statement, you have to have your star no. hat. No station, no guards, you promised me. You're joking, right? Michael says there was no witnesses. And what about Darren Kylie? What's he gonna say when he wakes up? Well, he's so off his head, he probably won't remember what happened. It's Michael's word against a Kylie. Who do you think they're gonna believe? All I'm asking is that we hold on. No point rushing down to the station, not yet. He is married to Claire so finds himself on the hennessy Kylie divide and I suppose has a difficult time juggling professional responsibilities with familial obligations. So? It's beautiful. <laughs> Isn't it? But this is a place for a family. 
and we'll fill it with one. Look at me. You will have children. I promise you. He's one of the good ones. McKay, I think, you know, despite our complicated relationship, a lot of respect. And I think, sure, like for Claire to be married into a very powerful superintendent, that'll be right up Patricia's alley. Loving that. Still to come, we take a look back at one of the year's most controversial chapters the groundbreaking Brian and Rachel story. Know that you're Don't you dare mention. Sometimes. A story just grips the imagination of the viewer. And also, what was your favourite moment? Oh, without a doubt, my favourite moment from the first year of the show is... It's not just the Hennessys and Kylies who cause all the trouble. Some of the biggest criminals in Red Rock are the Gardaí themselves. Did you get your dad to buy you a car? You're joking. I'm not 17. How about you? Me? No, I'm only 15. Well, the inspiration for the Brian and Rachel story came from an incident from my childhood a story that happened in the area where I grew up and the fallout from that. And when I was starting Red Rock in the very beginning and I was writing episodes, I thought this would be a good idea for a guest story over two episodes. And when I began to develop it and work out the story, I realized quite quickly, like, this is so good and I'm throwing it away so lightly. So what we did was then was we made it part of the serial story and it just grew and grew. I suppose if I'm honest, I knew she had a bit of a crush on me, but. That, that I, didn't, I didn't see that one coming. That was, that was out of the blue. She just, she went for it, kissed me, but I stopped it. We saw that. What I really enjoyed about season one, um, the the storyline with Rachel Reed and Brian McGonagall was was really interesting. I suppose the kind of McGonagall and Sharon at loggerheads with each other. Of all the shows I've worked on, that's one of the best stories I've ever been involved in telling. Primarily the story was really, it's a whistleblowing story, and the, the subject matter of Rachel was just more of the device to discuss the whistleblowing thing. I didn't realise the extent of how big it would get with uh, myself and Sharon, and uh, the intensity of it. So that kind of grew. I'm looking to trace the woman who took this footage from here. I believe she's late 30s. Blonde. No, that was one of your lot that requested that. My lot? You sure? Yeah. The Brian Rachel dynamic and what it created in Red Rock I thought was really engaging telly. Because you have this guy, he's a sergeant, he's in the station, he's the pillar of the community, he, you know, a guard comes with huge responsibility and uh, an, an air of respect, you know, and then behind the scenes, he's with a teenage girl. Brian, sadly for him, women are his undoing. And um, while he can manipulate and control his world around him, and men don't get to him at all, uh, he's had to confront himself with uh, his interactions with Rachel and with Sharon. And um, they ultimately lead to his 
optimize. Why are you abusing that girl? Why are you raping okay, her? Because she's done to it. talk like that. Does she think little... you'll marry her when she's 18? She don't want that. She'll hate you. You'll spend the rest of your life trying to keep her okay, quiet. Like shut you're your mouth. To I'm going to break one of your ribs again. She'll tell, and then you'll go to jail. And your wife and children know that okay, you're a sex offender. Don't you dare mention my family. Even though our show is 8.30 and it's pre-Watershed, we were still able to tell pretty much the story I would tell, even if it was after. And we were able to tell it without any interference or censorship. And I think that's why it ended up so strong and compelling. I think the Brian and Rachel storyline was probably the most important single storyline of the show. I think it was the, the engine that kind of drove the narrative. I was in touch with a few Garda stations and they've been really helpful with my research and I approached them about Sharon's situation with um, her sergeant, Brian McGonagall, and they were they were shocked by the storyline and they, they said, I don't even know how you'd react to that. And they were like, would you tell, would you tell? And I was like, yeah, of course I would. And they, they all agreed that they would say something, but because Sharon, she's so new and this is such a harrowing situation. He thinks he could actually just like swipe her away very, very, very quickly. But her resilience and her moxie and her fortitude just baffled him. So she's a bit of an enigma to him. When I do go to these places, the dark places with Brian McGonagall, it's, it's amazing how we can switch it on and then cut and we're complete friends. But there are times I physically ache when I have to be so cruel to him. You just never learn, do you? Brian McGonagall, I'm arresting you on suspicion of abduction, defilement of a minor and withholding evidence. Sometimes a story just grips the imagination of the viewer and they just, this is the one they want. And I think the Sharon um, McGonagall Rachel was the one that did it for us. I think it's the one that really kind of gripped viewers and made them compelled to see what happened. So I think it was vital. I think this was really, really important to the success of Red Rock. Look, I'm only trying to help Rachel, she called me. Take him away. The Brian and Rachel storyline was one of the most popular from Red Rock's first year. But what were the other moments that stood out? Oh, without a doubt, my favourite moment from the first year of the show is, you know, Sean, the guard, and Chris, the weirdo, comes into the station and says he's got a mobile phone jammed there. And he basically is demanding a cavity search, demanding it from Sean. Yeah, but Chris Malloy's a messer, sir. I don't care. He's always coming in here claiming he's committed some crime just so we'll search him. Then search him and charge him. He wants a full cavity search. What? Yeah, it's his thing. Gets off on it, being searched fully. Sort it out. Now, Sean is absolutely refusing, and he says Chris does not have a phone there. And they put him in a cell. And then the next thing is, these pizzas arrive. They have been called for, oh, eight, seven, by Chris in his cell. So Sean has to go and give him the cavity search. I wonder if the phone's set to vibrate. Roy, drop your pants. I thought you'd never ask. Squat. Yes, sir, go the hold is, sir. You think you're very funny, don't you? Ordering those pizzas. Patricia really knows how to rile Bridget, and I know when she gives her money to do her hair. <laughs> I mean, that is probably the worst thing a woman could say to another woman. Here's some money to get your hair done professionally. I had to come. Make sure you had the taxi fare to the airport. Use the change to get that hair coloured professionally. I don't need your charity. I would say that's exactly what you need. My favourite moment is when my own son, my 14-year-old son Joseph, um, came in for the day and he got a, a little a little roll. Can I help you? Uh, I found this on the bus. Wait outside for us there, big man. Evacuate the station. It was lovely having him around and he, he really enjoyed it and keeping it in the family. 
mm. one of the spikier little characters, I suppose, would have been Ollie Kine. So I don't know if you'd say you enjoyed it. It was, it was, uh, it was an experience, all right. It's good crack. He's a bit off the wall, though, Ollie. I just got to take the piss out of every single one of the guards in the show, no? <laughs> breaking into uh, breaking into Podge's Podge's flat and just smashing the whole place up, and all it was great, Craig. Yeah, it was great to play Ollie Coyne in Red Rock because, like, I'm not really used to getting chased by the guards. After the break, an exclusive look at our explosive end of year episodes. I love Podge and I don't want him to go. And then a sneak peek at what's coming up in 2016. Get out of my sight! Let's bring things right up to date with Red Rock's current biggest storyline. There's been one man at the heart of all the drama. He was the new sheriff in town and he puts the super into superintendent. Ladies and gentlemen, James McKay. McKay was, I suppose, like this hero character who runs the station and is torn between the demands of his family and what they want him to do in terms of the case with Michael and also the demands of his job. When we started, he's a pretty straightforward guy, you know, he's pretty black and white, he's good and bad, he's a very strong sense of justice. And through the first the first year we see that become compromised at times. This tragedy that you've suffered, losing a son. A brother. I can't imagine what that's like. I'm truly sorry for your loss. I think one of the most important characters in Red Rock is, of course, Superintendent McKay. You know, he is, in lots of ways, the rock in Red Rock. Um, he's the constant. How are you feeling? Never better, sir. <laughs> Some people do anything for a lie down, eh? My favourite storyline at the moment is certainly the McKay, Podge, you know, laser burn, BD Burke, what's going on stuff at the moment. I think it's brilliant telly. I want cash. Cash? In hand, regular amounts. What do I get? Everything you need to know. I love Podge and I don't want him to go, but I'm, I'm obviously aware that McKay is upping the ante. He's trying to find, get laser burn and get this sorted. So I'm, I'm wondering, where is this going to go? <laughs> None of them squealed, did they? Don't you believe it? <laughs> if they had, we wouldn't be having this little chat here now. Fact is, I know my men better than you know yours. I can trust my boys. Podge is such a lovable character. You can't help but sort of feel for him or uh, want him to win in a way or get himself out of this, this mess. 
What I've loved and what's really exciting about the Podge storyline is, of course, you know, lovable Podge, who we first met in the first episode and all he wanted was, you know, a milky cup of tea and a couple of wagon wheels. And then by the end of the year, you know, he's in the clutches of, you know, Red Rock's, you know, most notorious criminal, B.D. Burke. Um, and so Paul, we've seen a real descent in Podge across the year. Um, and McKay is on his tail. McKay is convinced that there is a mole in the station. Uh, and particularly after everything that happened with Brian McGonagall, he can't afford to have any more bad apples, you know, under his watch. So he's determined to find out who this is. And it's gonna unravel very soon and very quickly for Budge. I'm gonna kill him. I think Mammy's been abducted. I'll only need one. Now, if he's got her, Lord knows what he's going to do to her. You're not a murderer. Am I not? They told me that they'd kill you. Oh, Podge. What have you done? We've seen Red Rock's highlights, but what did the cast think about their first year on screen? What are the best and worst things about working on Red Rock? The best thing is definitely the people. Doing some love scenes and all them passion scenes with uh, India were great moments because you're learning about your character. Do you know my favourite bit? Zula Victor 2, I want to Victor Alpha face over. The best and worst things about working on Red Rock. There's a lot of laughing. That's, that's one of the highlights. I can't answer that. <laughs> I can't think. <laughs> <laughs> so we have these cubby holes in work, right, where they give us little notes and stuff. And, you know, Adam is very, he's very huggy, you know, he'll hug you a lot and he'll, you know, he'll touch your shoulder and stuff like that. Completely, you know, harmless. But me and India got together and we, and we wrote this note and we put the Red Rock stamp on it at the top. And it said that uh, basically he wasn't carrying himself professionally <laughs> on set. And uh, that if he carries on the way he's going, he's, he's not fired yet, but he will be fired. Because I'm such a huggable, like, lad, I just... Love giving everyone hugs, making sure everyone's all right. So they thought it'd be nice. Let's throw a letter from the big man saying, you need to relax, you're kind of feeling people up. It was so funny. Oh God, he nearly cried. And the worst thing? I think one of my worst moments was Stephen Cromwell's greatest moment. Give me a hide at the funeral. <laughs> I mean, for me, it's probably the colds. At one point, we were... <laughs> We were filming the scene where Darren Kiley was in a coffin and you could see his breath <laughs> rising from the coffin. It's pretty bad. Yeah, I had a nice little John Wayne moment where I get to deck uh, Brian, Sean Mann. So that was quite nice. I got to channel my my Steven Seagal. But don't, that's not a worse thing. I got used to the double denim now and the high heels. So. CCTV footage is really hard to say when you've like the DPP you're calling in and that CCTV footage better be, you're just like, oh no. <laughs> Can we just say we've got a clip? <laughs> Roll it there, Roshan, we've got a clip. <laughs> it's actually nothing because we all do as a whole cast now, you know? I mean, everyone, not just the Kylies. And even, we, we even get on well with the Hennessy's off screen. You know what I mean? Maybe I'm shattering everyone's illusion now that they must all hate each other. We are just going great. Now here, yeah, that's a secret. <laughs> I can't say that. 2016, yeah, it's going to be a massive year for Connor. He's going to have a life-changing incident, and it's going to be pretty impactful for everyone who's around him. I think 2016, for the Kylies, is going to be really interesting. It's going to see Bridget put under a lot of pressure, um, and you know, she really has to think about what's important to her. Christmas and New Year's is going to be huge. It's going to be really dramatic and really emotional. 2016 has some really great storylines coming up and the reads are going through a lot. The Tyrrells need some laughs. They need some fun. They need a day out at the fair, I think. They really do. <laughs> I, I would hope some, uh, I would hope a little bit more love, happiness <laughs> and stability. I really like uh, how uh, the character develops and I'm um, looking forward to seeing it on screen. The character I played was an Elvis Presley impersonator who got beaten up by a rival Presley impersonator. I think that character should come back as a Tina Turner impersonator and get beaten up again by a rival Tina Turner impersonator and this could go on. I think that uh, we have great characters, we have a great kind of world. Um, 
and I think there are many, many stories to tell. I think 2016 is going to be an even more exciting year for Red Rock than 2015. We've learned how to make the show now. We know who those characters are and we are going to take them on some very big and very daring journeys. Tune in for the dramatic New Year's episodes where we bid farewell to one of our best loved characters. We just look back at 2015 <laughs> sensational storylines. And now, an exclusive look at next year's action packed Red Rock. The car. No! You're a recovering addict, and she's too young for you. You know that. You know what you want, and it's not that girl. Is it? Where is he? One chance, that's all you get. Luke, Luke David, David Tyler. He's a coil. That's not going to change. Find this funny, do you, Pat? No, I'll show you funny. You know, this bridge. You know what to do to a man. Don't even think about it. You really want to play games with me? I won't even leave a mark. Go! You defended yourself. You were completely out of line. Get out of my sight! Get out of my sight! Fight back. It's not about the fight. We don't see each other for 20 years, not twice in a few days. You're gonna kill me? Go on. Do you keep it together? I'm just sick of them all. I think something stupid, little kid.